Wow, I wasn't expecting that kind of introduction and welcome. Thank you, thank you so much. It's amazing to be on this stage, but it's also amazing to be able to experience it with so many people that I hold close to my heart, so thank you. All right, so before I even get started, I wanna kind of lay out how I'm gonna take you on this magical ride. So first I'm gonna tell you about who I am today, what I have accomplished to date. Then I'm gonna tell you about a moment in my life that gave me a set of lessons, some tools that helped me to accomplish the things that I've accomplished to date. Then after that, I'm gonna talk about those tools specifically in a way that you can take those away and walk with them to apply them to your life regardless of your background, your socioeconomic status, and your goals. Does that work for you? I mean, it's not like you could say anything else I was gonna do anyway, but, <laughs> but thanks for validating me, I appreciate it. <laughs> so, right here, to date, I am an accredited television music producer. I've created music for shows such as Demi Lovato's MTV Moments, E! News, Paranormal Survivor, on stations like MTV, BET, TBS, True TV, and they've been played in countries such as Switzerland, France, Spain, Brazil. I tend to follow my music wherever it's played, so I'm also a world traveler. So if my music hasn't been there, I like to take it there. So just this year alone, I've gone to Portugal, Spain, Morocco, France, the Netherlands, and Mexico. I'm an author. Today I released a book called The College Cheat Sheet. Get your copy at the collegecheatsheet.com, $14.99. Uh, I, <laughs> I co-wrote that book with uh, Imad Jabara. You owe me $20 for that shout out. I'm also a PhD candidate and a student affairs pro, and I get to work with some of the most amazing people. So that's some of my resume that's right here today, to date. Now, before you make some assumptions, well, I guess you can't really make some assumptions just because Dolores, she kind of let the cat out of the bag. Nothing was given to me. My life was not handed to me on a silver platter. I had to work for every single thing that I have. Every single one of those bullet points mentioned and those that are not mentioned. Now, the, the moment in my life where I gained those tools to be able to put me to where I am today was my last year in college, my super senior year. I'd been in school for five years, changed my major like three times, and this year I finally decided it's time for me to graduate, it's time for me to make something of myself and, and finally leave school. Now, of course, the moment that I made that decision, everything kind of crumbled apart. My financial aid was cut that year. All of my scholarships dissipated into thin air. So I had to pull out loans. So I pulled out as many loans as I possibly could. And even while doing that, I didn't have enough. So my solution was work overnights and do work study. Now, it may not sound that bad, but let me walk you through my schedule to kind of paint this picture. On Sunday night at 10 p.m., I would go to work. I would get off at 8 a.m. I would then drive to school, start work study at 8.30, get off at 11, go to class. From 11 to 3, I was in class. From 3 to 5, the library. 5.30 to 8, I went to my night class. From 8.30 to 9.30, I went home, showered, ate, got ready for work, only to start again. And I know you noticed nowhere in there did I say sleep. I did that every single day for at least four days a week, sometimes five. And I would sleep on Saturdays if and only if I didn't have a performance to attend or to be in. I was a music major. Now, that's 96 hours straight minimum that I would go without sleep. 
And to frame this even more for you, it takes about 11 days to die from sleep deprivation. And every single week, I was doing about half of that. I was killing myself that year to go to school, to finish my degree. I wish I could tell you the sleep, sleep deprivation was the only thing that I dealt with, but it wasn't. Now, everything that could happen did happen. It was Murphy's Law. If it can go wrong, it will go wrong, and it did. I got the flu right before my recital. I'm a singer. My car broke down, and I had to walk to and from my destinations before I got the sense to start asking for rides. Then my life got a little bit easier. The registrar told me that I couldn't graduate. That one, that one was the biggest blow to me. So when I found out about this, it was about a few days after I had just paid for my graduation fees. So that included my cap and gown, my expensive frame to put my degree in, and my class ring, all of about, you know, $1,000. Now keep in mind, I'm working to keep the lights on to eat and, and to pay rent just to survive. So I didn't really have $1,000 to pay, but I did because it was my time. Well, that particular day, it was a little bit before a, a vo vocal lesson, so I went into a practice room before I opened it. I opened up the piece of paper. And the words were, your GPA is not high enough for you to graduate. It was like those words jumped from the page and ripped my heart from my chest before my very eyes. Every single thing that I was working for was for nothing. I proved everyone right. I'm a nobody. I'm just from that hood in Charlotte. The best thing for me was to sell drugs or my body. That's all I have because I'm worth nothing. I cannot prove my mother that she has something worth smiling about. I felt worthless. And for the very first time in my life, I felt defeated. My alarm went off to remind me that I had a vocal lesson. So I wiped my tears, straightened out my work uniform, and I went into my vocal lesson. And immediately, she could tell that something was wrong with me. She asked. And, you know, me being me, I thought I had on the perfect poker face, but, you know, my eyes were bloodshot red. I just cried a river. So I told her what happened, and after I finished telling her, she said, she ran her hand across the top of the piano lid and closed it, finish crying, then go do what you do. To this day, I don't really know what she meant, but <laughs> I took it as go win. Go get your crown. That's how I interpret it. So after I finished crying a little bit more, I went and I looked down at my GPA and I calculated. Then I looked at the GPA that she had and it didn't match. So then I, I calculated again. By the way, that's the sound of calculations. Next time you do calculations, make that sound. <laughs> and it didn't match again. So I, I, let me try just one more time. Check my math. Carry the one. Again, it didn't align, so clearly something wasn't adding up. So now it's time for me to go find out. So I went to the registrar and I, I asked her, you know, what are you calculating? And I found out that she wasn't counting all of my grades. Hmm. And I asked her why, because these are my grades, it's a part of the music curriculum. Stop tripping. <laughs> so, So she told me that historically she had not counted those. So because of that, I would have to get approval from the Vice President of Academic Affairs and the department of my chair, I mean the department of my music program. So I went and I spoke to everybody that I needed to. I went back and forth, letters, appeals, and just some downright begging because I wanted to graduate. And finally, I got what I wanted. And in May, <laughs> thank you. Finally, in May 2009, I walked across the stage and earned my bachelor's degree in music. My nephew, 
put my hood on for that. I shook the hand of the president of the university and I sang at my graduation that day. I got what I wanted. Now, I wish I could tell you that the graduation itself, like that was an amazing thing, but, but it wasn't. Like, yes, that was a great achievement, but that wasn't the amazing thing. The amazing thing was the lesson that I learned that year. Well, the set of lessons that I learned that year. Well, what did I learn? I learned that vision equals victory. The very beginning of the year, I pictured myself walking across the stage. I pictured myself being hooded by my nephew, kneeling down, because he was a tiny son. So, so I pictured myself doing that. I pictured myself singing at my graduation. I visualized that from start to finish. The next thing that I learned was that an action plan really makes a difference. Make an action plan. So once I had that vision in mind, I made an action plan. I, made, I completely planned it out from graduation to where I was. I mapped it out from the semester to the month to the week to the day. And the beauty about that was when the semester was too much, I could focus in on that week. And when the week was too much, I could focus in on the day. And when the day was much too great to think about because I was on day four of no sleep, I could focus in on just that step. Because if I could make one step, I can make another one. And if I can make another step, I can make it to the end of the walkway. Now, if I can make it to the end of the walkway, I could get to my car and I could drive home. So the beauty of that plan was it allowed me to focus in when the plan itself and the goal was much too overwhelming to bear. But it was also grand enough to where if I needed a reminder and motivation of how far I had come, I could see that too. The next thing was persistence beats all. Now, there were many times where I could have given up, but I didn't. So when my financial aid was cut, I could have quit. When I got the flu, I could have quit. When my car broke down, I could have stopped. When the registrar told me no, I could have accepted that. and Been defeated, but I didn't. Persistence trumps all. I also learned that obstacles are nothing more than many goals that are unwanted and inconvenient. <laughs> you know, they're, they're gonna happen. It's never smooth sailing. So you approach that the same way you approach your complete desired goal. So you look at that and you say, all right, well, what's the end game? What's the action plan? And persevere through it. So you approach that the same way because it's just an inconvenient, unwanted goal. And the most important thing that I learned that year was I am worthy. My circumstances do not define me. The family I was born into does not define me. My socioeconomic status does not define me. It might have been where I came from, and it might have built the person that I am, but it doesn't dictate where I will go. So the tools that you can walk away from, from my story, is one, vision equals victory. Whatever your goal is, envision it. Picture yourself completing it, whatever that is. So that could be grand, like a, a, a huge merger or acquisition. That could be something small as, I need to clean my room because if my mom shows up, I don't want her to feel embarrassed that I'm her child. <laughs> so picture that, whatever that is. Oh no, my mic. Can you hear me? Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> so picture that, whatever it is. Now, once you have a clear vision of what that is, completely defined, then map out your goal from the end to where you are. Reverse engineer it all the way backwards. Because if you have that in place, then you can focus in on the large goal if you need to. And then when it's much too great and overwhelming to look at the big picture, you can focus in on just that step. You can zoom back out to be motivated, to be reminded how far you came. Persevere. Things are going to happen. Work through it. 
obstacles or mini goals that are unwanted and unexpected. You approach that the same way. And then the last thing is you are worthy. You're worthy of every single thing that your heart desires. Everything. You're worthy of your greatness, whatever that may be. Don't let anyone else define that or dictate that. Don't let your current circumstances or your past circumstances define that because you are worthy worthy of your greatness. Now, when great is an option, why well, settle for good, right? So I leave you with this. Vision equals victory. And when great is an option, good is not enough. Thank you.